Hi everyone, thanks for watching this presentation about wireless hacking with Fruit presented by NCI. This particular presentation is actually an adaptation of a very low-tech presentation I had delivered at a local Toastmasters meeting and I'm going to endeavor to keep the technical jargon as accessible as possible so I don't lose anybody along the way. Wireless networking. It's not something that's set to explode in the near future. It's something that already has exploded. In fact, I'd venture a guess that most people watching this presentation have some kind of wireless only device, meaning it doesn't have a physical network connector anymore. Another thing that's also exploding is the availability of open wireless networks or so guest networks at coffee shops, hotels, businesses. These are incredibly convenient because you can access information on the go regardless of where you are. And it's these particular networks that I want to focus on today. There are three main things I want to cover today. First, I'm going to talk a little bit about how a wireless network advertises itself and how wireless devices decide which network to connect to. Then I'm going to cover one specific attack that can be done knowing how devices connect to a network. And lastly, I'll give a few tips on how you can protect yourself and make yourself less vulnerable to this type of attack. So wireless networks, we all know there are wireless clients or devices and access points. If we think of the access point as a person with a megaphone, this person is just yelling several times a second the name of the network. So he's saying, hey, guest access here. This is how you connect to me. And they can also include other information about the capabilities of that particular network. Some people will look at this and say, I don't really like that people can park outside my building and see that my network is in the area and then try to connect to it or try to attack it. So they'll say, the answer there is just take the megaphone away from the access point. Stop it from broadcasting the name of the network. That's called SSID cloaking. This will work except there's a little secret with wireless networking and that is there's always a megaphone. So if I take the megaphone away from the access point, I have to give a little megaphone to all of my wireless clients. So instead of a beacon, I now have wireless clients probing for a network. So how this works is I'll turn on my wireless card and my device will say, hey everybody, I'm looking for Starbucks. And if I happen to be near a Starbucks, the Starbucks access point will then raise its hand and say, yeah, I'm Starbucks. Here's how you connect to me. I like long walks on the beach. Now an attacker can just configure some software on his or her laptop or reconfigure an access point to do much the same thing. So when I come along and I look for second cup, my access point will say, yeah, I'm second cup, connect to me. And someone else next to me turns on their wireless device and says, I'm looking for Ninja Access only. My access point will say, yeah, I'm Ninja Access only, connect to me. And so on and so forth. It doesn't really matter what the probe is for. The access point will say, yeah, that's me, connect to me. And some devices will successfully connect. I'm going to jump out of the presentation here for a second and give you a little demonstration of how this works. For the demonstration, I'm using what's called the Wi-Fi Pineapple, which is about $100 purchased from hack5.org. And on the Pineapple, I'm using some software developed by a gentleman named John Bebo. It's called the Auto Rickroll Payload. I've made absolutely zero modifications to it. So I take no credit for any of the code being used in this presentation. Okay, so I'm gonna turn on my wireless card and we'll see what happens. There we are, we see my card is automatically connected to a network called Ninja Access Only without any intervention from me. This is actually a network that I had created a few days ago and connected to once and my device has remembered it. So that's great, I'm connected to my Wi-Fi Pineapple. Let's see what happens if I try to go to Google. Okay. 
Okay, so I have been redirected to a website with ASCII art of Rick Astley, and you won't be able to hear the music playing, but it's playing Never Gonna Give You Up. Now that's odd, so I better quickly log into Facebook and tell my friends about it. Okay, same thing. So by using a little DNS trickery, regardless of which website I go to, I'm going to end up on that one website. So that's a very lighthearted example of what could happen by using this Wi-Fi pineapple. Obviously there are other more malicious things that could happen. I could start a port scan against my device, look for open ports, vulnerable services, and start trying to gain access to the machine. If I do gain access to the machine, then I can have access to all the information on it. Or I can actually just allow my device to get out to the internet and sit there and passively record all the information traveling through the pineapple. So there are many things I can do using this type of attack. So now that we're aware of this type of attack, which has been around for a long time, how do we protect ourselves from it? There are a few simple things you can do. I'll go over three. There are many more, but in the interest of time, I've limited it. First, broadcast your SSID proudly. If you're in charge of the configuration of your business's wireless network or your home access point, do not turn on SSID cloaking unless you have a really good reason to do so. By giving the megaphone back to the access point, we take it away from the endpoints. And that makes them less vulnerable to this type of attack because they won't be probing so often. Do not allow your device to automatically connect to open networks. So you saw what happened when I turned on my wireless card. It probed for Ninja access only. The Wi-Fi pineapple raised its hand and said, yeah, that's me. And my device connected all without any interaction from me. If I had been forced to actually pull up the list and decide which network to choose, I would have seen Ninja Access only and said, why is that network broadcasting here when I'm not at home? That's a little odd, maybe I'll avoid it. And lastly, make sure that your wireless software is up to date. That means running Windows updates if you're using the Windows supplicant or a software update if you're using Mac OS. But if you're using something like Intel ProSet or the Dell Connection Utility, you're going to want to go to their websites, download the latest versions, and install them every once in a while. And the reason for that is the latest versions of software are a little bit more resilient to this type of attack. They have some intelligence where they'll say, you know, last time I connected to Ninja Access only, it required a pre-shared key, and now it's saying it's a wide open network. I better pop up a warning message and let you know that something fishy is going on. You can still choose to connect to if you want to, but at that point it's your choice. So there's three things we covered. We talked about how wireless networks work and how they beacon and probe. Talked about one simple attack that can be done knowing how wireless networks work and a few things you can do to protect yourself. I'd strongly encourage you to check out hack5.org if you're interested in more information about the Wi-Fi pineapple. Otherwise, be sure to check in at blog.nci.ca for our latest posts and updates. Thanks again for watching.